Hi Facebook. I know it's been a while since I've popped on here and done a live, but I just had to get on and connect with you guys today. And if you are drawn to this video, if you come upon this live, I want you to know that it's for a reason and it's for a purpose. That everything God does in our life, even how he takes the good and the bad, he uses it all for your good. I had the most just amazing time in worship today. Um, part of my coaching business is we have these incredible mentors who are spirit-filled, Jesus lovers, kingdom builders, who just pour into us and call down like the literal anointing of God. And I just I wanted to get on here tonight with you guys really quick just to share that God does have a purpose for your life. There is a purpose for your pain. There is a purpose for your path. And it is not by mistake. And hear me clearly when I do say to you guys that your pain, your suffering, your trauma, things that you have been through, those were not destined by God. Please do not think God orchestrated that, that he had a hand in that, but he is aware of it. And in his gentleness and in his goodness, he will take the painful parts of your life. You always hear it. There is no testimony without a test, right? There, you know, like he takes the lemons and he makes lemonades out of our life. Those things that happen to you, those things that have set you back, that have caused you discouragement, hurt, pain, doubt, those are from the enemy. And a lot of times in life we have this bad habit of getting mad at God. Why didn't God fix it? Why didn't God stop it? Why didn't God change it? Because God is not a molester of free will. And so there are people who abuse their autonomy. There are people who abuse their power. There are people who abuse the gift of free will that they've been given. They don't surrender to God. And when we don't surrender to God and allow the Holy Spirit to do his perfect work in our hearts, we hurt people. Okay? And so I just want you to know, however, that you still have a purpose, that it's not too late for you. That you are not too broken, that you are not too far gone, that you are not too far from God, or maybe you don't know him at all, but that he sees you, that he longs for you, that he thought of you, that he covered you on that cross. And I was just thinking and reflecting recently about how a year ago, a little over a year ago, I was so broken. I was so depressed. I was in such a dark place that I could not even fathom what light could look like. That's how dark it was. And I remember the moment I hit the lowest of lows, I hit my rock bottom and I said, God, I cannot do this. And I surrendered, not even on purpose because it was the Christian thing to do. I just literally could not manage the amount of burden I was carrying, the emotional, trauma that I was struggling through. I was self-harming. I, I, I was talking negative to, negative to, negatively to myself. I was not treating my body well. I was doubting. I was questioning God. I was lending my ear to all manners of different types of wisdom and ideas. And I had gotten real. God never left me. Let me be clear. I had gotten so mentally far and disconnected from him because I was hurting that bad. And I've heard people say, well, how can a true believer ever turn from God? How can a true believer ever fall away? I've loved God my whole life. And I'm going to tell you, as a true believer, I fell away. I fell away from the Lord because the pain was so deep. Even though you have the answer, sometimes you have the cure, doesn't mean you always take it. It doesn't, you can have the medicine in your cabinet right now, and sometimes you just don't stop to take it. And if you're not careful, the enemy will come in and he's a great deceiver and he will play on your insecurities. He will play on your pain. He will play on your doubt and he will lend you a measure of truth wrapped in lies. And it sounds good. And once you start opening your ear to things that are out of alignment with the word of God and you're disconnected from the people of God and you don't have accountability and you're left to your own imagination, which God tells us to cast down, right? You can spiral to a very dark place and have loved Jesus your whole life. So don't let people lie to you and tell you or have you question your salvation because you went through a valley 
season. Not every moment of a believer's life is on cloud nine. Not every moment of a believer's life are they on fire for the Lord and casting out demons and speaking in tongues and, you know, bringing people to the Lord. That's just not real life. We have seasons we go through and some seasons are dark and some seasons are full of light and hope and you're just so excited and exuberant and on top of the world and there's other seasons where you wonder what, who am I really? What is it that I really believe, this boy? <laughs> Um, and so I just, you know, I remember in the kitchen, I was crying my eyes out. I was cooking and I was crying my eyes out. And I remember I struck myself in the face. I was so distraught. I wanted relief so bad that the only thing I could think of to jolt myself and to feel something else was to hit myself. And I'm sharing this with you guys very transparently because I think a lot of people will look at me and my life, my bubbly nature and think there's no way this girl could ever have had a dark moment. Yes, I've had many. Yes, I've done unfruitful things to myself. Yes, I have had negative thoughts. Yes, I have had thoughts of death or uh, inflicted harm on myself or been toxic to myself. Um, but Jesus, <laughs> but Jesus, he's never far from you. And sometimes you have to get to the lowest of lows to climb up out of the pit. And Jesus met me on my kitchen floor, crocodile tearing, hiding from my kids. And I remember I just cried out in crocodile tears and I just said, gee, help me. And in that moment, it slowly started to lift. Literally, my mom can tell you, I called her on the phone after and the burden started to lift. Hope slowly started to enter back in. I started to become sensitive again to the presence of the Lord who had never left me. But my mind was just so consumed by everything, every worry, every hurt, every trauma, everything that I was going through. And slowly the Lord just started, like I, I got this vision of him the other day of me crying on the floor and just literally seeing him hold me, hold me in his arms and slowly lift me up and say, I'm here daughter, I've always been here. I was simply waiting for the invitation to come in because he's a gentleman. He doesn't force himself on you. He doesn't force his will on you. He allows you to choose him back, right? And then he sent two angels to my door who were from Fellowship Church and they invited me home. This is their literal words. We'd love to have you come home. And so that Sunday I went and I remember standing in worship, a skeptic with a critical spirit, unaware, unsure, but I was open to going. I just said, okay. Okay, Lord, I'll, let me go check it out. And I broke. And it, it was just a succession over the last year of just breaking. And where my life is today from where it was a year ago blows my mind. It blows my mind how you can go from utter darkness in a pit to your deepest, darkest low. To now where my life is fruitful. I have hope. I'm healing. I have joy. My purpose is being made clearer. I'm a part of an incredible business businesses because I'm a part of two of them but I'm actually I'm getting to impact and help people transform their lives my businesses are ministry they are full of impact and it's not about how great I am or how much I've succeeded but it's what God is doing through me and I know every single one of my clients and my customers have been called to me and me to them that we've been assigned to each other to bless each other's life beyond the programs, beyond the product, but just through community. And so I just wanted to just kind of share that with you guys. Like I cannot even believe who I am today in comparison to a year, year and a half ago. I cannot believe, I can believe what God can do when you invite him in to your life. And it will cost. It will cost, but in a good way. Sometimes we think as we surrender to God, and my pastor said this today, he said, surrendering to God, surrendering to your calling, surrendering to what God has created you to do on this earth, that's not hard. Submitting to him, it's not hard. What's hard is half-stepping. What's hard is straddling the fence. What's hard is stop, starting stopping. What's hard is being a double mind, right? That's what's hard because you're constantly in this place of being torn. Surrendering is easy. Dancing, in and out, start, stop, playing around with yourself, playing around with what God has called you to do. That's hard. It's frustrating, you know? And so I just thank God 
that he has made my path clearer. I am more confident, Godfident, I call it today, than I've ever been that I am doing exactly what he's called me to do through my online ministry when I share my faith transparently, through being a health coach, through my Mary Kay business, through the fellowship that he has called me to be a part of, through the relationships that he's calling me to cultivate. But I wanted to tell you, yes, it does cost, but the cost isn't a loss, it's a gain. It's a gain and he paid the cost. So the relationships that I'm acquiring now, the connections that God is making the rooms that he is putting me in, it, it did, it cost me some friendships, it cost me you know, some people's opinions of me because they don't understand the journey that I'm on. And I was just talking to someone the other day. A lot of people cannot go where God is calling you to grow. And it's not about you cutting people off. God does the pruning. You just keep moving in faithfulness in the direction that he is calling you to. And whoever and whatever is not supposed to be with you will fall off. Dead leaves fall off roses all the time. The rose doesn't stop growing to cut the dead leaf off. It just falls off as a, as a byproduct of the rose growing, right? And so in your life, as you're growing, as you're moving in the purpose that God has for you, things, people, situations, jobs, environments, communities, sometimes they fall off. They don't go with you where you grow. And it's okay because God has a purpose and a plan for them too. And sometimes it just needs to be over. That season is over. So don't, don't be afraid to just release yourself, to fully surrender to God's will for your life. Who cares what people think? Who cares? They, like, I love when people say other people's opinions of me, not my business. It's not. You know whose business that I care about? God's. His opinion of me, I care about that. My opinion of myself. Right? I care about and I need to align my own opinion about myself underneath God's opinion about me. What does God say about me in his word? And am I in alignment with that? And rebuke and cast down any and every other thing that does not line up with that. What doesn't line up with what God says about you, doesn't line up with what he's called you to or the purpose that he has for your life and just go for it. Just go for it. I am so thankful and so grateful for that season of darkness because it was my season of being planted he took my pain and and when you like learn about plants in school right like I'm a preschool teacher there's a thing called germination and that seed when it's planted in the ground it goes through germination it has to die it has to bust out of what it's currently in what it's used to what it's comfortable and die to itself to take root in the soil to sprout up and grow and produce something fruitful so your dark seasons the seasons that you seem underground, like you're struggling, are really just God pruning, maturing, strengthening what is weak so that you can sprout and be fruitful in your life, in the unique and special way that he's created you to. And it's not kind of supposed to look like anybody else's journey. God made you unique for a purpose. And this isn't self-glorification. This isn't you self-elevating or self-idolizing yourself, but understanding that you are worthy because God says you are. Because God loved you enough to lay down his life. He paid the cost for you. So you must have some level of value, yes? And so stop underplaying yourself in false humility. I am God's daughter. I am called for a purpose for this season to these people. And there are certain people assigned to me. And Lord, I want all of it and I want to live out loud and I want to tell people about you and I want to show people what are pos what is possible as you help me overcome my belief barriers as you help me break through my stinking thinking as you help me overcome limiting beliefs that people have placed on me and that I placed on myself I am so excited about life every single day the best thing that ever happened to me was falling apart on that kitchen floor a year and a half ago it was the best thing that ever happened to me because it was a catalyst. We just talked about this tonight. Your suffering, your hurt is a catalyst for your ministry. 100%. You will connect with people that no one else can because your story will touch a place in them that no one else can. So speak it out loud. Don't hide. Share. If you've fallen, if you made mistakes, be honest. Be transparent. People don't want perfect. They want real. That's why God gave me the ministry of Crystal Clear Ministry. It's my name, but my name means transparent. I share and always have been 
felt led to share transparently. He wasn't always received. I was told sometimes you share too much, you're doing too much. And God's like, that's who I called you to be. That's your authentic ministry. Share. People need to know what it really looks like to walk with me. It's not always easy. It's not always perfect. And I don't want just people modifying their behaviors, cleaning themselves up to look good enough for me because you can never merit the favor and the grace of God anyways. It's gift gifted to you. Now, in understanding of what you've been gifted, live a life worthy of that calling. That's a heart transformation. One of the things I talk to my clients about and in co- in, in when I'm coaching them on their health journeys there's a difference between intrinsic motivation that comes from within where you've had a heart change, where you're sick of your situation, you, you're sick of the health diagnosis, you're sick of the medication, you, know, you, you want to heal, you want to become whole, and you're tired of hurting yourself. That that motivation will move you further into health and anything in your life than external motivation, which is, I just want to be skinny. Or because the world tells me I should look like this. That will get you going, but it won't get you to the end you have to have a change of heart it's called repentance metanoia a change of mind in every area of your life that you are over you're sick of you're tired of struggling you're frustrated if you haven't made the changes and it's not being sustained it's because you haven't really had a change of mind you don't like the circumstances you may be uncomfortable but something in you you're not willing to do the work you're not willing to throw your heart over the line so you stay stuck or you keep starting and stopping. Start Ask God to help you have a change of heart. In whatever area it is in your life. With your walk, in your relationship, in your career. It doesn't matter. It's all applicable. Because God's laws transcend every area and, co- and capacity, component, compartment of our life. His rules are true for everything. If you want more out of life. If you know that you've been called for more. Which I promise you, you have. Because I am not special. I am special to God, but I'm not no more special. There's no favor over me more than you. He is no respecter of persons. The only difference between someone doing what God has called them to do and someone who is not is obedience. Sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. And if you feel you're lacking that, spend time with him. Get around other spirit-led believers. Be willing to allow God to help you break your belief barriers and go for it. You're going to grow and mature so much along the way. The path becomes clearer every step you take out in faith. The story has been written, but he's so loving that he reveals it to you in chapters. He reveals it to you one line, one sentence at a time. Trust him. He sees you. He has a purpose for you. And do not let anyone or anything, as my pastor said today, change your tone about the story that God has written for you. Who cares what they think? People are going to come with you, they're going to watch you, or they're going to hate on you. Pray for them all. Leave the door open for fellowship if they should choose to change their mind, but keep the train moving. You can jump on with me, you can watch me pass by, or you can occupy your time talking about me when God has something for you to do. Right? So just wanted to encourage you guys. Go for it. Do the hard things. You can do hard things. The Holy Spirit will give you everything you need to do it in your health, in your finances, in your relationships, in your healing. And you are called to be a hope dealer. So go out and be a light on a hill. Stop quenching yourself because you're afraid of what people are going to think or you're afraid that you are not good enough. Yes, you are. God doesn't die for trash, right? He didn't die and give up his whole life because you had no value. No. He did it because you are the most precious thing to him. And there are people waiting for you to say yes. You And God gave me this word years ago. He said, Crystal, you are the movement in someone else's life. When you say yes, you release other people in your sphere, your influence to say yes to. And I'm seeing it happen in health. I said yes. My coach said yes to her health, which gave me permission to say yes to my health. And now I have 11 clients that I am helping right now change their lives It's not just getting skinny. It's not just, oh, let me get a six-pack abs. Those things are great. It's great to be healthy. It's great to love the way you look, to feel sexy, and to be able to wear what you want to wear, and to have muscles coming. Like, in my 40s, to be experiencing that, phenomenal. Because I'm not supposed to be able to have a healthy, fit body in my 40s. I'm supposed to say goodbye to that, right? Because I'm 40. No, it's a lie. People are changing their mindset, their relationship, with things that are toxic behaviors. 
The gift I get to give away as a health coach and through our programs has nothing to do with me trying to push product on people. But transforming lives. And it's I'm not doing the work they are. I just get to be blessed and honored to partner with them as they work through these mental blocks. It's amazing. It's amazing. We are not meant to do life alone. We are meant to do life in community. And God will bring you your tribe. I just was telling you this, Marissa, the other day. He will bring you your tribe of people who get you, who understand you, and who will call you up. And I know the world likes to call us out. We love to shame people all day long. Bust people out, shame them, put them on blast. Make people feel in, you know, insignificant or inferior. That's not what God called us to do. He said edify and lift up. We hold each other accountable. Yes, we need to talk about that thing. But we call people up to greatness. We call people up to live a life that brings glory to God, that aligns them in obedience to the, what God has put here them here on earth to do. We are stepping stones in each other's life, not stumbling blocks. So my charge to you guys tonight is what is it that God has called you to? What have you been fighting and dragging your heels saying yes to? Because slow obedience is still disobedience. Learn to say yes right away. And he will highlight the way. He will send you the person. He will send you the program. He will give you the plan. He will order your steps. It has already been written. It's not how it will unfold. It's you trusting that God will unfold it to you as he knows you're ready to receive it and take the next step. Do it. Go do it. People are waiting for you. I promise. I love you guys. Have a good night.